Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Genesis. Hi there, faithful listeners. This is Jen here with P40 Ministries podcast. I just can't believe how close we are drawing to Christmas. It is like a week and a couple days away. That is just absolutely insane to me. It feels like December and actually November as well just flew past. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it's just it's crazy how close to 2021 we are getting. So if you didn't listen to Monday's episode definitely go back and listen to it. Otherwise, you'll be kind of confused because we are finishing out that part of the story today. But we're not going to finish Genesis chapter 24 just yet. This is a huge chapter. So it'll probably be Friday we finish out this chapter. But just a quick recap. Eliza leaves Abraham and meets Rebecca. And he had asked God to make his journey successful. When he meets Rebecca, he is certain now that God has indeed made his journey successful. So he starts worshiping God. So let's start reading verse 28 of Genesis chapter 24, and we will continue to verse 51. Now grab your Bible and your cup of coffee, and let's go ahead and read. I will be reading out of the AMP version of the Bible this morning. Then the girl, Rebecca, ran and told her mother's household what had happened. Now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to meet the man at the well. When he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and when he heard Rebecca, his sister, saying, This man said this to me, he went to Eliza and found him standing by the camels at the spring. And Laban said, Come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside since I have made the house ready and have prepared a place for the camels? So the man came into the house, and Laban unloaded his camels, and gave them straw and feed, and he gave water to Eliza to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. But when the food was set before him, he said, I will not eat until I have stated my business. And Laban said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great, wealthy, and powerful. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and maids and camels and donkeys. Now Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was in her old age, and he has given everything that he has to him. My master made me swear an oath, saying, You must not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But you shall instead go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son, Isaac. Then I said to my master, But suppose the woman will not follow me back to this land. He said to me, The Lord, before whom I walk habitually and obediently, will send his angel with you and make your journey successful. And you will take a wife for my son from my relatives and from my father's house. Then you will be free of my oath. When you come to my relatives, and if they do not give her to you, you will also be free of my oath. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if now you will make my journey on which I go successful, please look, I am standing by this spring of water. Now let it be that when the maiden, whom you have chosen for Isaac, comes out to draw water, and to whom I say, Please give me a little drink from your jar, and if she says to me, you drink, and I will also draw water for your camels. Let that woman be the one whom the Lord has selected and chosen as a wife for my master's son. Before I had even finished praying in my heart, behold, Rebecca came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. And I said to her, Please, let me have a drink. And she quickly let down her jar from her shoulder, and she said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son whom Milcah bore to him. 
and I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who led me in the right way to take the daughter of my master's brother to his son as a wife. Now if you are going to show kindness and truth to my master, being faithful to him, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may return to the right or to the left and go on my way. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, The matter has come from the Lord, so we will dare not speak bad or good to you about it. We can't interfere. Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. One of the first things I noticed when I was reading this passage is that Laban was in it. And we will learn more about Laban in the coming chapters. Laban is a little bit infamous in the Bible. And that was the first thing I noticed. And the second thing I noticed was when Rebecca went and talked to Laban. Laban first noticed the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms. So Laban was very money-minded. He saw the these gold jewels that his sister was wearing. And he's like, oh, what's that? And Laban was Rebecca's brother. Bethuel is still alive, and Bethuel would have been Rebecca's dad. Even though Bethuel was alive, Laban was the one who was kind of like the clan leader at this time. So he was probably the heir to everything that Bethuel had. And the eldest brother during this time in scripture, would have something called a birthright. So Laban is likely the birthright owner, which means that he becomes not only the clan leader, but he also inherits a double portion of everything that Bethuel would have had. So Laban is likely this person and is probably taking over as clan leader. And we also know from later on in scripture, that he is a good deal maker and also kind of shady. So Laban is a shady character and very money minded and doesn't always do things properly the way he should. So Laban sees all this jewelry on his sister's arms and the nose ring. So he rushes out to meet Eliza, who had given Rebecca these gifts. And he's like, come in, come in. Why are you standing out here by the well? Look, I'm preparing a room for you. And I already have an area for your camels to stay for the night. So come in, come in. Don't stand out here by the the well. Come on in. And he was likely doing this because he enjoyed the riches that Eliza was offering. If you listen to some of the previous podcasts on Genesis chapter 24, you'd have learned that Eliza basically has a caravan with him like a prince's caravan with jewels and precious things and clothes and gold, everything of the finest things that Abraham had to offer. And Laban is seeing this stuff and wants this mysterious, rich, crazy stranger to come and stay with him. So he puts him up in his house and he he makes this big old feast for Eliza. And Eliza sits down to eat and sees all this good food before him. And it was very likely that Eliza was probably pretty hungry. You know, he had just gone through a pretty arduous journey to get to this land and conduct business. But before he eats, he does something kind of amazing. You know, this big feast is before him, but he's not concerned with that. He says, I am not going to eat a bite until I talk about the business that I have to talk about. And Laban and Bethuel are sitting there at the dinner table and they're like, oh, okay, well, what do you need to talk about then? And so Eliza gives this big old story of every single thing that happened down to the very T. Everything. The fact that he was Abraham's servant. The fact that he was on a mission and made an oath to Abraham. The fact that he was looking for a wife for Isaac. The fact that Isaac was the sole heir to everything Abraham had. The fact that he had prayed to God to find Rebecca and then this miracle happened and there she was. And she completed all the steps that that Eliza basically had given God as an ultimatum for her to complete. And the fact that he is now sitting here asking for Rebecca's hand for Isaac. And so these two men, Bethuel and Laban, answer him. Well, this matter came from the Lord, 
So we are not going to speak bad or good about it, and we can't interfere. You know, Rebecca is here. Go ahead and take her. Yeah, go ahead and take her. Let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. And you know, that's a super interesting response that they give him. It's very likely that they didn't actually know much about God or care much about God, as we will learn later on, because Laban is stated to have many gods, many idols. So Laban and Bethuel very likely don't actually care much about God, but they want to impress this guy who has a ton of money. And plus they know who Abraham is, and they probably believe that Eliza is actually Abraham's servant. So in their minds, they're probably going, cha-ching, you know, we can make money off of our daughter if she marries this Isaac guy, because we don't even know who Isaac is, but if he's the sole heir to everything Abraham has, then he's going to be filthy rich. And so is Rebecca. So they are totally okay with Eliza taking Rebecca. And like I've said, stated before in different podcasts, women back then didn't really have the choice or the chance to choose who they were going to marry. But it's also very likely that Rebecca was on the same page because she was a very unique woman. And we learn that she is on the same page later on in this chapter, and we're not going to talk about that just yet. But I'm actually going to read the last verse after this just to finish out this this episode. So verse 52, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground in worship before the Lord. Eliza was worshiping God in front of these people. He was a very, very good servant to Abraham, very loyal, very faithful. And he was seeing these miracles just taking place that God was giving him everything he had asked for and everything that Abraham had asked for. And he is bowing low in worship before the Lord. And you know, these men at the table are probably sitting there staring at him, seeing him worship this God who maybe they don't even believe in. They're seeing Eliza's faith. And they're seeing how everything is playing out. And possibly this is also a, a message to Laban and Bethuel and even Rebecca that this man, Eliza, was a very faithful and loyal person. And I'm sure this might have calmed some of Rebecca's nerves even to go and travel with this guy when she sees him and his devotion to his master and to God. So this was Genesis chapter 24. We will finish out this chapter on Friday, 6 a.m. Join me then. Now, if you're feeling some stress about Christmas coming up, go and read my last blog post that I wrote on Saturday, and I will put a link to that in the bio of this podcast so you can easily get to it. And that is just how to be still during a very stressful time of Christmas. And the whole point of that blog post is to be still and know that he is God during the busiest time of the year and how we do that. So definitely go and take a look at that blog post and subscribe to the blog because every single Saturday, usually, sometimes I miss a Saturday, but almost every single Saturday, I will do a new blog post and put it out 6.30 on Saturday mornings. So your subscription to the blog is very, very appreciated. And you'll get some great blog posts in your inbox every Saturday morning. But thank you guys for tuning in this morning. Merry Christmas and happy listening. <laughs>